Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at a very new point release from Elementary OS. This is their version 6.1. Yolness. 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 I don't know, but that's the code name. This is the new version right here. And I'm taking a look at this a little bit different. What I actually did was a couple days ago, this was sent to me. So I just installed it on my primary computer and I've been using this version of Elementary OS as my primary workstation PC for a couple days now. So I could actually kind of experience some of the new features and tell you what I think of the uh, operating system at the end of this video. Before I tell you what I think, I'm gonna just tell you about some of the new changes and features. So getting right into it, some of the more significant changes has been in their app store right here or their app center. And there's just been some general improvements, cleanups, and they've taken some of the criticisms from the last uh, version of release and did some things to kind of uh, address that. Now, when you first opened up the app center, you weren't really greeted with too many applications. You could see here, these are some of the ones that are recently updated. You have this new recently updated scroll that kind of goes by here. The categories look a little bit better, but like I was saying, when you first open up Elementary OS in their App Center, you have like maybe under 100 applications actually available to you. And what you need to do is you actually need to sideload flat packs into this. And now they actually let you know that this is something you need to do if you go ahead and look something up. So that is definitely helpful. It would be nice if it was just the repositories were included. That would be cool but they're not, but it's good that they're at least giving us that little message now. With that, something else that's new is if we go down here, we have the privacy and security category. So that's just a cool little addition. If we actually go over to it. You can see within the actual categories, we have paid apps. These aren't really paid. This is just like preferred donations, as well as the non curated apps, which of these are the applications that were side loaded from Flatpak. Like I said, I've been using this for a little bit, so I've actually already done this. But overall, this is looking pretty good. If we go to a category with a lot more options, such as audio, you can see we have paid apps, free apps, and the non-curated side-loaded apps, which by the way, I'm gonna need to go ahead and get this. And then it says install non-curated app, and I'll hit install anyway. And actually, I don't want to show this again, so let's install that. Really easy to use uh, with some of the API changes that they've made, the uh, App Center should load a lot quicker. And overall, they, they just have cleaned up a lot of different things. If I go under development here and I open up one of the uh, application pages, such as a uh, code here, you can see we have a lot of good information here. We have the licensing, translate, send feedback, share, other apps by Elementary OS right here. And if we go into something that's one of the uh, non-curated applications, such as let's go to the Atom text editor, Wonderful text editor. You have the little warning here. You have the information that was pulled from the uh, Flatpak repositories. Not as much information, but there is some information here. So that's pretty nice. And updating works good. You see I have some updates. I need to update two components on the operating system as well as the videos application. And just some general little UI improvements. So let's go over to communication. And let's grab Discord here. It will give us a little status bar within the button. So that, that's just something that's pretty cool. And you see online interactions, info sharing, Discord seems to have a little bit more metadata. So overall, it just looks really good. Their app center has been done very well. I do wish the Flatpak repositories were included by default, but you win some, you lose some. And I do believe this is the actual announcement, which will be linked down below. So you could go ahead and uh, read more about all these different changes and go way more in depth than I'm going to be able to do in this video. If we go down here, we have the App Center website. So if you actually like some of these elementary OS applications and you want them on a different Linux distribution, all of the elementary OS catered applications are available to download as a flat pack. An example, their screenshot utility is actually really nice. So if I go ahead and open this up, screenshot. You see, it's just a little simple dialogue, point grabber, close after saving. You have the type of screenshot you want to take. Very nice application. Just go over here, download it as a flat pack, and you could have it on your system as easy as that. Now with that, one thing you may notice, the uh, Firefox is not following the dark theme. That's to be expected. I could change the Firefox theme manually, but if I open up their web application, you can see this is following the system theme properly. I do have this set to dark. We will dive into settings in a little bit, but another thing I want to show you is some of the new additions when it comes just to the general desktop overall. And one of them, if you hold down Alt and hit Tab, you'll have a quick little window switcher here. 
So you could use your mouse or you could just keep pressing tab to go ahead and navigate between all these different windows. So if I went app center like that, I could tab over to Firefox again, really easy. And it's a lot uh, prettier and more efficient than what they were doing before. And of course that follows the theming, the accent colors and whatever you set in your settings. Now, another thing is the uh, portal. So what I'm going to do is go over here. Let's create a new file and let's type something important. And then let's say we want to save this out. So what we would do is we'd hit the save button here and this is the new portal for that. So it gives you a lot more options, better organized. It's cleaner overall up here. We go and create a new folder. I could call this something. And then we could save this as uh, something here. Enter and the overall that little portal save open as dialogue looks a lot better. And another thing is their new app chooser application for flat packs that just looks better in general. And with that, that takes us to the general theming and UI. And the first thing with that is in their applications, they have better bookmarks. So if I search something like downloads, you can see that it has that downloads folder bookmarked. So I can easily open that up through there, the bookmarks here. So anything I do have bookmarked, I could go ahead and throw up there. And another update that is noticeable is under housekeeping. If we go ahead and open that up. So that's in the settings and you can see here how easy it is to go ahead and search through your settings, your bookmarks, your applications, everything through their application launcher. If we go over here to housekeeping, uh, you can automatically delete downloaded files after 30 days. So that's just one way if you are constantly having a downloads folder that's filling up, you could set that to automatically get rid of if you're not going to do anything with those files. And you have old temporary files and trashed files you could go to get rid of here. Overall, this looks a lot cleaner. And then we have all a whole bunch of different other settings here. There hasn't been too much changes, but some that are noticeable. For example, they cleaned up some things under display so you'll have better multi-monitor support. If we head over to uh, desktop right here, we have our typical stuff such as wallpaper appearance, but we have a more improved text scaling option. So I could go ahead and bump this up a little bit if I'd like to. You can see how good that works and integrates within the actual desktop. So if that's something you use, that is nice. And then you have this uh, dyslexia friendly, which to me, this looks weird, but I can see how this could be beneficial. That's not new, but this uh, text scaling was definitely improved. And the, if we go up here to sound, there has been some general UI improvements. One thing that's really nice that a lot of distributions don't do from default, which I think is very silly, is being able to pick your default audio device right here on this dialogue. Uh, thank you, Elementary OS, for just incorporating that. If we go into our sound settings here, you can see all these different options. The icons are a little bit bigger. Overall, just cleaned up. And if you're interested in learning more about this UI and interface and everything, you could check out my uh, Elementary OS 6 video. Overall, it's super pretty and it's really just the workflow in Elementary OS is very nice. Everything works, everything's where it should be. This is one of the few Linux distributions that I haven't had any uh, substantial bugs or glitches in. I think I had one little glitch with the uh, trying to do an online account and the dialogue didn't work at first for some reason, but then I updated the system and it did work. So I think it was just a temporary bug. Uh, I do wish they would incorporate online accounts a little bit better. It is something that they're working on, but it would be nice if there were more options other than just IMAP. Now, I, like I said, I've been using this for a couple of days and overall it's been a very good experience. You can see I have Steam down here. I was using it to play a uh, split gate for a couple hours last night and I had no significant issues, no dropped frames, anything like that. So when it comes to gaming, I don't notice any differences between something like this and Arch or Pop OS or any of those other distros that are uh, more gaming centric. So that's not going to be really something that matters. Um, I really wish I could try out their email application, but that's with those uh, online accounts again. Their web browser is really nice. I was forcing myself to use this for a little while. It's, I believe this is use, uses a WebKit, but I'm not 100% sure, but their, their web browser is really nice. All the elementary OS catered applications just integrate so well with the system and they're all phenomenal. There's a reason why they kind of push those applications in the app center a little bit more than others. Just because overall, if you could use one of their applications versus a third party, you're just going to have a better, more integrated experience on your system. 
And you can just see this like in the calendar application. This is beautiful when it's simple, but when you actually start using tasks and things like that, it's one of the better designed and more user friendly calendar applications. So like I said, everything that has changed, updated and all that will be linked down below to the official release article. I do recommend you skim through that. I didn't mention everything that has changed, only the key highlights that I've noticed. So do make sure you check out that link down below with all of that. Uh, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are truly awesome. Uh, thank you to Elementary OS for uh, letting me know about this before release. That was very appreciated and kind of you guys. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.